That's the very special person, international master John Donaldson, multi-talented, actually one of my early coaches. Really? He's with Maurice. All right. Well, John is known across the chess world for his incredible knowledge of chess history. Also, of course, as the ever-present captain for the U.S. squad at the Olympics and also as an all-around nice guy. Mm -hmm. So, John, welcome back to the show. Thank you very much. Why are you here in St. Louis this time? Uh, we just had the uh, uh, U.S. and World Chess Hall of Fame inductions and uh, also just here to do a little work for the World Chess Hall of Fame. Well, before we get to that, let's talk uh, a little bit about um, the great team effort in Astana, the world team. Uh, we didn't have all our top players, but some players did go and represent. Lenderman, who just drew Nakamura, he was there for sure. What was your experience in this event? Uh, it was really, really satisfying. Uh, as you alluded to, uh, we, didn't, we weren't at full strength. Uh, there were several conflicting events. There was a tournament in Prague that uh, Sam Shanklin was committed to. There was also a uh, uh, tournament in St. Louis, the St. Louis Classic that was at the same time. And then also some players, because the tournament was on such short notice, they, you know, and because of the fact that the U.S. Championship started five days after Astana ended, and it's like 30-hour journey door to door, you know, front and back, uh, it's understandable a lot of players decline, but U.S. bench is pretty deep these days, so even though we had to play, go to player number 15, we ended up tying for fourth. We beat China for the uh, first time in over a decade, and our top two boards, uh, Darius Swears and Sam Sevion, who's playing in the U.S. championship, those two in their debuts for the U.S. team had performances of 27.52 and 27.62, respectively. Out of 17 games, they lost one on first on the first two boards, and uh, Darius, like he, he, he played against, uh, you know, Dang and Napomniachi, you know, like world class players. And, and he's not even playing in this tournament. Yeah, I mean, it's true. It's true. It tells you how strong the U.S. championship is. And that's what I want to say. You have seen these U.S. championships for decades. How do you contextualize this one, having seen so many stars go through U.S. ranks in these amazing championships? Uh, this is by far the strongest championship ever. I mean, you've got five players in the top 30 in the world competing in it. And you've also got a bunch of young stars that are probably underrated, like, you know, Sam I mentioned, but you also have uh, Jeffrey and a wonder. So it's really, really strong. But I should also mention it wasn't just the U.S. team that did well in Astana. The U.S. women also did really well. And uh, three of the players there, uh, Tatev and... Uh, also, uh, Sabina and uh, Carissa, they doubled up and are playing in the U.S. Women's Championship as well. But we also had uh, Rochelle Wu, who uh, at the age of 12 was the youngest ever U.S. representative in a team tournament at this level. And she had a 2380 performance rating in that <laughs> tournament. 12-year-old. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, it's times are changing. Uh, yeah, times done change. <laughs> yes. And we're looking at the youth movement happening in this tournament, and it seems like it's no surprise. Oh, seven of the of the representatives in the women's are under are teenagers. Yeah, can't some can't vote, can't drink, all of them. <laughs> they can at least play not chess. legally, but they can play some chess, <laughs> dropping moves. But let's get to the World Chess Hall of Fame. You were there at the induction to see these these great names get inducted. Akiba Rubinstein, we mentioned Susan Polgar, of course, got in Mark Taimanov. Uh, what's your feeling when you come to such uh, an event to see history being memorialized. Well, you know, the thing is, you, you're, you, you have a great player that you know about during your lifetime, but especially as you get older, sometimes you realize that players that you remember when you were younger, they're like the newer generation doesn't remember them at all. And I think one of the things about the World Chess and U.S. Chess Hall of Fame is that it sort of means that these players are always going to be remembered. You know, and, and, you know, 50 years from now, somebody's going to visit the St. Louis Chess Club and they're going to go upstairs and they're going to say, Yasser Sarawan, you know, and they're going to learn about him and what a great player he was and what a great representative he was for the game. Yasser will still be around <laughs> doing commentary. Like, yeah. Yasser in the grave already. Oh, well, 50 years, 50 years. I, I, I mean, modern medicine does have these miracles, but... What do you mean, Yasser with that gin and tonic? And he's got his magic for him. Yeah, I may be underestimated. <laughs> Yeah, we, you know, we love Yasser. But tell me, you also uh, donate to the World Chess Hall of Fame. You, is it just uh, artifacts, some dollars? Uh, tell us how, how much well, you really like this place. Uh, I really love this place because I think that uh, 
you want there to be some place in the chess world, and, and, and I should say first off that one of the things that makes chess so special is that unlike other games like, you know, like say poker or, or bridge, it's the rich history and cultural background of chess. You know, you know there, there's, there's all these artifacts that are associated with the game that would add to it and make it such, such, a, such, such a, uh, a wonderful experience. And so, uh, to my mind, you need to have a place that's a proper repository for it, that can preserve the materials, that you know has the expertise to do that, and also to be able to uh, put them on display, and uh, and the World Chess Hall of Fame can do that in spades. So, uh, I feel you know so happy that I have a place to donate you know you know my chess treasures. I love the way you threw poker under the bus there, too, because <laughs> Jennifer is sitting there. So you're just making everyone in the panel angry. Well, you, well, you know, I've got to treat everybody equally. That's right. And uh, how can people donate to, to the World Chess Hall of Fame? They can uh, go to the website, and they can go to uh, uh, info at worldchesshof.org, uh, and uh, they can just shoot up the, uh, the staff there an email, and uh, they'll give them all the details they need. Well, thank you so much. I'm glad you didn't throw me under the bus. If I gave you time, I'm sure you would. John Donaldson, always a